kanalen. I dag ska vi ta upp något intressant tema. Så jag sätter över till studio. Ja, then I want to welcome you here to another program. Uh, this is Family Channel. My name is Rune Fardal and today I am visiting uh, the Institute of Otto Julius uh, in Warsaw, in Poland. And uh, for those of you who know these people, you can see that this is uh, Silje Garden, a Norwegian uh, who just received asylum in Poland escaping the Norwegian Barnevarna, CPS. And I should have introduced you first. Uh, this is the president of Udo Julius. Uh, you can maybe tell your name yourself. This is hard for foreigners. Yes. Jerzy Kwasniewski. Jerzy Kwasniewski. Yeah, not so bad. Okay. Exactly. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little about this institute first. What is it you are president of? Uh, we had just uh, fifth jubileum, uh, fifth anniversary of establishment of Ordo Iuris a month ago. Yeah. Uh, Ordo Iuris is a legal think tank uh, combining expertise and knowledge and practice of lawyers mm. from the field of academics yeah. and professionals, yeah. barristers working mostly in Poland, in, in different cities of Poland. Uh, our primary field of focus of our activity is the protection of the basic fundamental constitutional values mm. uh, natural rights yeah. as they are called in the constitutional uh, law in the uh, United States yeah. uh, primary the uh, f basic freedoms and rights like right to life freedom of speech mm. uh, freedom of assembly uh, freedom of press mm. uh, we are providing protection uh, to the families as well yeah. with both our academic uh, expertise, mm. uh, organizing conferences, uh, publishing uh, a legal journal, yeah. uh, culture of law, uh, organizing research, publishing reports on family policy, and providing uh, legal assistance to the families, yeah. mostly families uh, that are confronted with the administrative violence, as we call it. Yeah. Uh, I mean the uh, infringement of the internationally protected uh, family life. Mm. Uh, in Poland itself, uh, we provide legal assistance and full legal rep representation yeah. to three to four hundred cases and families a year. Okay. Uh, this year it will be in total six hundred cases mm. and more than four hundred of them are families mm. uh, with children that were taken from the families by the Polish administration yeah. or that were endangered with children being taken by the administration. Yeah. Yeah. And in 100% of the cases, the children are back in the family. Yeah. Uh, this, is some, this, is, this is something that we do for, for, for years now. Yeah. Uh, and in some point of history, it was two years ago, the first Polish families of emigrants mm -hmm. uh, in the United Kingdom, Germany and Norway yeah. asked us if it is possible for Ordo Juris Institute and its lawyers to provide them with assistance, with legal assistance mm. uh, in much more oppressive environment yeah. <laughs> of Jugendamt, Barnabana yeah. and Child Protection Services in the United Kingdom. Yeah. So it is two years now that we have started to provide legal assistance mm. and with time of course uh, we are not biased against foreigners so of no. course we also uh, provide assistance yeah. to, to foreigners yeah. who needed our help in those countries yeah. and foreigners from those countries traveling to Poland. Mm. So Celia is a typical example of the cases you have. Maybe it is not typical. but I would say this is the most extraordinary case. <laughs> most extraordinary, yeah, because her case, she, she ran away from Norway to protect her, her family and, and the family values are strong here uh, in your uh, institute and in Poland. Yes, Can exactly. It is, um, we, we often say that Ordo Juris Institute is focused on the family rights, mm. but in fact it is our constitution that is yeah. focused on the family rights. Yeah. Uh, and it follows the Article 8 of the European Convention of Human Rights that protect yeah. the family yeah. life. Yeah. According to the Polish constitution, not only in the preamble of the constitution, the family is specially cherished, mm -hmm. but also in the article 18, yeah. the family and protection of family is part of definition of the republic. Yeah. 
So the Republic itself is defined by its focus on the family. Yeah. So, the, so the family uh, is a building block. Family is a building block. Uh, is uh, basic basic structure, uh, and basic family unit. Mm. And as well, we have very specific constitutional provisions mm. providing um, for protection of family autonomy. Mm. Uh, there is constitutional rule that no family uh, may be uh, the, the, the inter administrative interference mm. in the family autonomy is not possible without the final court verdict. No. Uh, so it is not possible in Poland as it is a common practice of Barnabas for mm. instance that children are taken from the family before the final verdict of the second instance of the court is issued. Yeah. Uh, this is, of course, uh, a main reason uh, for, uh, for the main tool for practical protection mm. uh, of family in Poland. Yeah. Uh, and what we do is we uh, try as Ordo Juris mm. and as also uh, a wide group of lawyers in Poland mm. to provide support for this primary constitutional rule. Yeah. Uh, we are, of course, very much aware that there are uh, organizations and politicians in Poland mm. who try to impose against the constitution mm. a system of childcare yeah. very similar to the German yeah. system or uh, the Norwegian one. Yeah. And it was 2010 that we had an uh, amendment to the law on child, uh, child uh, care in Poland. Mm and uh, some institutions, some legal institutions from the uh, Norwegian system and from the German system were introduced into the Polish system. Mm. Uh, I hope that uh, in few days, in few weeks now, a mm. uh, new amendment will be accepted by the parliament. Yeah. Uh, so we will come back to this pure rule of the constitution yeah. with, the, uh, with the stress on the uh, family protection. Mm. Uh, we are also very much concerned with uh, protection of the family, of course, against, for instance, domestic violence. Mm. Uh, we, are also, no, we are not only providing uh, as legal assistance to families against the administrative violence, but also against domestic violence, mm. which we find is one of the um, most important risks yeah. uh, for the families in Poland. Uh, however, we do try to find out the proper solutions yeah. to this problem yeah. without uh, this level of interference in the family rights mm. that we observe in Germany or in Norway. Yeah. Uh, I am the secretary of the Governmental Council on Combating Domestic Violence mm. uh, that is mostly of representative of NGOs yeah. in Poland. And what we do there is we are trying to find a proper solution, a proper way to provide protection, the full protection for the families. Yeah. So, so the, the family uh, as a unit is important for you to keep keep together and, and actually more more help than of course, the family is uh, basic for all other constitutional values. Yeah. We build our national identity yeah. on the family yeah. and on its educational function. Yeah. We build the uh, society value mm. and the cooperation value of the society yeah. on this. Family, that is the first school of cooperation, yeah. Yeah. the first place of cooperation. Okay. Uh, we are trying to place a family mainstreaming as the general rule mm. in the policy making uh, yeah. in Poland. And I can say that we are very successful in that, yeah. uh, especially in the last few years. Yeah. Okay. And as when I said that CBS case was the most extraordinary mm. case, is because we did provide assistance to a few other families from Germany, United Kingdom, yeah. none of them asking for asylum protection yeah. in Poland. And uh, all of them only asking for general representation in their home countries. Mm. But in this case, it was so clear yeah. that there was a violation of Article 8 of the European yeah. Convention of Human Rights. Yeah that we found it is the best precedent case to show yeah. that we need to provide the special protection mm. uh, to this specific Norwegian citizen yeah. and her little daughter yeah. uh, because if there is an institution of asylum protection 
it should be used in cases like that, yeah. when, where there is no shades of grey. No. It is a yeah. very, very clear situation yeah. with uh, infringement of the family rights, infringement, infringement of the family autonomy, and violation of the basic human rights yeah. that we are all Norwegian, Polish, German, English dedicated yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, so, and in fact, during the last year, because we started more than a year ago, uh, the case it was uh, that the motion was issued in July, uh, September last year, and since then, a year ago, many of the even Polish politicians uh, perceived this motion and this issue as something very strange. Yeah. To ask for asylum for a citizen of the Western country yeah. in Poland. But afterwards, in 2018, mm. the situation and the mainstream opinion in Europe has mm. changed. Yeah. In June this year, we had this, re this wonderful report of Valerio Bileci in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, a result, a fruit of two years of inquiry, mm. two years of analysis of, of Valerio Gilesi, uh, based on the Bodario case. Yeah. Uh, and it was very critical about the Norwegian Barnabas system. Yeah. Then we had decisions of the European Court of Human Rights yeah. that has uh, decided that the Norwegian system does violate yeah. human rights. Yeah. And You're just thinking about the young yes, in, yes. In the and then we had just a few days ago mm -hmm. a resolution of the, uh, of the Parla Parliament of Europe, mm -hmm. European Parliament, against Jugendamt, yeah. that in fact is very critical about those elements of Jugendamt that are so similar to Barnabas system. Yeah. Uh, so <coughs> after more than a year, our motion. Uh, filled with criticism of Barnabas system mm -hmm. became a mainstream yeah. uh, in Europe yeah. and it was much easier now for the government uh, of course to decide uh, and to issue a positive decision yeah. uh, than it was a year ago. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, just a year ago or so it was something strange that a citizen from a western country like Norway come to another European country, ask for asylum. And, and I think that's, that's um, so to say, it's disturbing the opinion when Norwegians try to make of themselves, look like human rights, uh, in the front of human rights. Be because the Norwegian government, they are very active, running around telling everybody else, not break human rights. But in, in your case and, and Janssen case and other cases, we, we have the Logan case just yes. in the Grand Chamber. There are suddenly, this image is breaking down. It, it, it's not just nice, it's a lot of thing happening behind this facade uh, in the country. I believe that with time, when the Central European countries join the European family, yeah. uh, we are bringing our own values yeah. Uh, and we are, uh, with time, more and more courageous mm. in estimating what's really happening in the Western countries yeah. that before were perceived only through the uh, Berlin Wall and yeah. through the uh, curtain. Yeah. Um, and now we see that uh, those basic European values mm. that we built upon our new countries after collapse of communism yeah are not so much followed mm. in many of the Western countries. Yeah. And it is the case with the family uh, protection and the family life protection mm. and Norway. Mm. Uh, of course, this topic was also brought to us by Polish citizens yeah. who were confronted with the situation, yeah. living in Norway. Living in Norway, coming back to you. Coming, so back, to, coming <laughs> back to us and asking for help. Yes, of course. We have, I don't know, 200,000 Polish people living yeah. in Norway probably. Uh, many children, yeah. many families, yeah. um, and they found out that the situation for the families is much harder there, yeah. there than in Poland. Yeah. More and more Polish families are going back to Poland, yeah. uh, leaving their homes, leaving their, their jobs in, in Norway, mm. but choosing to, 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 to follow the more safe yeah. career in yeah. Poland and the more safe family life yeah. uh, in Poland. I, I talk to people from other uh, Eastern European, former Eastern European countries like Lithuania, Estonia, Romania and Bulgaria 
And they say the same. They send the children and their wife home to the original country and then they work in Norway. And some just stop working and move back again. Yes. And the only reason is the Norwegian Barnavan and the CPS in Norway, the way they treat them. Uh, and it, is, it, it, it is a wonderful country, yeah. wonderful people, uh, good salary. Yeah. Uh, so many factors yeah. that would bring people from the Central Europe to work there, to live there, to, yeah. to found a family there, to have children there. Yeah. Uh, but with this uh, administrative tools of interference in the family life, they just cannot bring up their children no. uh, in, uh, in a way they would like to do that. Yeah. Uh, being uh, faithful to their national identity, mm. being faithful to their religion, yeah. religious identity, yeah. uh, and to their w own way of life. Yeah. It's, it's too much interference from the government exactly. agencies. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. In fact, we share the same rules mm. in all Europe that there is the taking children from the family mm. is the last resort yeah. for the uh, family uh, care for the family care system. Yeah. But in fact, it is last resort in Poland, in France, in Italy, in Spain, yeah. but no longer in Norway no. or Germany. Uh, what we observe is that many of the employees of Barnard Barnett system choose the short short way. Yeah. Uh, especially when dealing with foreigners, yeah. but also, as we see now, yeah. when dealing with Norwegian citizens. Yeah. Uh, and the short way is just to take, to take the child from the family and to uh, have the problem solved in that way. Yeah, I, I see many cases where they actually take the newborn in the yes. hospital and claim there is a, a serious danger to that child's life. Yeah. How can that be That's in the that, hospital? That was the, it was they tried to do with me and it. the only reason why it did not succeed it was because I had you know such a great support from the, the hospital staff, from all the doctors, yeah. nurses and midwives. Yeah. We, we have seen the logs in the hospital yes. system, yeah. in the yeah. medical yeah. documentation, yeah done by the employees of Barna Vernon before Ida was born. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Bar they were checking her before she was born. And that is, you know, a serious violation according to the Norwegian law because yeah. it's it's not allowed to open a case without a, a consent before mm -hmm. prior to, to birth, right? Yeah. And and I discover when when I was asking for the, the logs from the yeah. hospital that Barnavarna has been collaborating with um, unauthorized hospital staff that yeah. was not involved in in the treatment in my treatment, yeah. um, and they had made you know uh, prior to the birth uh, during uh, you know uh, the labor yeah. and afterwards yeah. uh, you know a lot of you know uh, sneak yeah. <laughs> uh, and. And I would say, from the point of view of the international human rights guarantees, that even if it was according to the Norwegian law, mm. it was a violation of the international yeah. guarantees of privacy, yeah. private life and family life, yeah. to log into the medical documentation before anything happens. Yeah. Just in order to look into the situation of the family. Yeah. And what else? The situation afterwards with the Alina Center, yeah. when you were observed uh, without any reason for yes. you to be put there yeah. uh, voluntarily, yes. uh, but in fact uh, the only alternative was to take your your, your uh, newborn child from you. And you know, what was that the really then? Uh, no, it was Alina. Alina in, 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 yes. yes. Okay. And what I think it's very important is that I, I see with my case, mm -hmm. and I receive a lot of other information and yeah. that you know it is like the similar way of dealing with the case they build these yeah. cases in in the same way sort of yeah. um, and so it, it, it looks like they are escalating almost before the baby is born yes a, a tremendous worry about the mother's capability they haven't seen the mother they, with, with the baby because sometimes the baby isn't born yet and, and that's when you start to wonder, is there another agenda here? Because it's not about human rights, yeah. it's not about the best for the child, it's not born yet. They're actually planning and in some cases they already have a foster parent ready. Yeah. So there, there is some other aspects here. 
because you, you pointed that out that you know should the, the child be in such a danger when it is uh, under the care of the hospital Hospitals. staff and yeah. that's what exactly what the doctors say yeah. to to Barnabana that uh, if you accuse her, you you now accuse us because yeah. here she is under our authority yeah. and yeah. under our care, and you yeah. you have no authorization here. And sh we w we say that this is you know n not an emergency situation, and that no. they had to you know of course leave, but the harassment continued you know only hour after uh, I was dis discharged from yeah. hospital. Yeah. We have analyzed many, many, many more cases, yeah. and in very similar way as it was uh, proceeded in in, in CDS case, mm -hmm. we, we even see the grounds for decision to take by Fergus and to by Barnabas before yeah. to take the child from the family. There is no eye contact <laughs> between mother and unborn child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, we, we, we had you even have the the X -ray <laughs> yes, we, had, we had even decisions like that, yeah. and what it means? It means that there is no scrutiny yeah. of the case. Yeah. They they do it automatically by just copy pasting yes, yeah. yes. grounds copy for, for pasting other decisions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is no observation. And when we deal based. with fundamental yeah. uh, rights yeah. and family rights, yeah. there is. No excuse for the administration mm. to copy paste the grounds for the, no. for the decision. No. No. It should be scrutinized and it should yeah. be the last resort as yeah. all the resolutions of the Council of Europe, all yeah. the resolutions of the Parliament, uh, European Parliament say, the last resort measure yeah. to take the child from the mother, yeah. from the family. What yeah. I think is actually the most disturbing aspect about this is it, it, when cases like this are brought before the, the County Appeal Board and mm. often later um, the District Court and sometimes uh, even the the the, appeal, higher, court, the yeah. higher court yeah. it's like it doesn't seem like the the judges they they look at this they just take every you know um, arguments that are yeah. presented uh, by the employees of Barnana as like uh, the, the truth they and they, they, they you it. cannot even uh, you believe that they they look into the cases yeah. at, at all yeah. because uh, as yes, she, you know, mentioned this example with lack of eye contact yeah. for an unborn child and so yeah. on. It's, yeah. It does not make any sense. It's no. Yes. We, we observe documents of the files where there are mixed files from different cases. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody uh, checked for that yeah. during uh, court review, yeah. judicial yeah. review of the case. Yeah. Uh, and the child is out of the family. Yeah. Uh, he or she is held somewhere else in the foster family, in the foster institution. Uh, of course, it is with detriment to the growth of the child, mm -hmm. uh, to the child's fundamental rights according to the Convention of the Rights of the Child. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, nobody cares. Yeah. When, we are, when we are analyzing the public debate and the legal debate uh, of the jurisprudence mm -hmm. also in, in Norway on the Barna Barnett, we observe that every few years in the election cycle mm. uh, there are some uh, voices of concern yeah. uh, raising the issue of reforming Barda Vernet. Yeah. We observed it last year before yeah. elections. Yeah. And just after the elections the new government announces that everything is alright. Yeah. And as we heard uh, Minister of Family, Minister of Children, of Norway and uh, the representatives of our countries will visit Norway yeah. in order to learn about Barna Yeah. And it shouldn't look like that, especially under the international pressure. Yeah. I hope that also serious case mm. will contribute to this pressure yeah. and it will show that more and more countries uh, will not accept yeah. uh, dealing with families in such a way, no. with obvious violation of the international human rights yeah. um, yeah, guarantees. And that's why on 4th of uh, January next year, next year we are organizing this roundtable of experts mm -hmm. in Oslo yeah. in order to present our uh, findings of the research team of, of, of academic branch of Ordo Juris yeah. uh, in order to ask the experts from Norway mm -hmm. Uh, for their opinion, from their Norwegian perspective, yeah. before we uh, finally draft the report and publish the report in yeah. English and present it in Brussels, in, in, yeah. in Warsaw, in Oslo. 
uh, I hope that it will be an element contributing, this whole case will be an element contributing to this uh, big picture uh, yeah. of the Barna Vernet. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what's, 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 what's most important that in this particular case yeah. uh, they are secure. <laughs> yeah. That they are secure already. Yeah. And uh, it was something that for a year we were uh, waiting for. And for the few last months uh, we had nearly no signs from the part of administration, of the governmental administration. Uh, they fall silent. Yeah. And just during a few last weeks mm. we were contacted by some representatives and uh, asked for additional information. Yeah. Uh, and then th there was a hope that this decision will be issued as it was yeah. a few days ago. Uh, and uh, so minister. a few months ago, it looked like it was turned down. Totally. It was in, in June. In June, the ministry of uh, it, the history of the of the decision is that in January this year, the office for foreigners yeah. issued a positive decision, yeah. uh, affirming that there was a violation of uh, human rights in Norway yeah. in the yeah. CS case. And that in case she returns home with her child, mm. uh, she's uh, in danger of further uh, violation of uh, family life yeah. protection. And uh, Office for Foreigners recommends to grant asylum protection yeah. uh, to the mother and the child. Yeah. And then, according to the Polish law, the Minister of Foreign Affairs had to uh, grant consent yeah. on asylum protection, and yeah. he refused in June. Uh, saying that it is against the uh, interest of the Republic yes. uh, to grant asylum. Nevertheless, he affirmed that yes, human rights were violated and will be violated even, yeah. even further yeah. if she returns home. Yeah. And one of the reasons uh, was the economical uh, interest of the Polish state-owned corporations yeah. uh, working in the oil industry. Oil and gas. Oil and gas industry yeah. uh, with Norwegian, uh, with Norwegian uh, with, with Norwegian uh, companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we appealed against this decision and yeah. according to the Polish law it is a very specific uh, um, option because we had to ask for reconsidering yeah. decision by the same Minister of Foreign Affairs. Okay. Uh, and in fact he did reconsider yeah. this decision and the second decision issued just a few days ago has only two pages. Yeah. And uh, there is uh, information that they change their opinion, yeah. uh, they grant consent to yeah. give asylum protection to Sylvia and her daughter, and that's all. Well, what was there the uh, foreign minister or was it the prime minister who, who granted this? It, 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 it is a foreign minister. Foreign it minister. is a foreign minister who grants consent. Of course, he's a member of the council of, uh, of, of the government. Yeah. Uh, so, in fact, of course, the, the Prime Minister w w was involved was somehow involved. Yeah. In, in the case, but formally it is decision of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Yeah. And then the case, is now, the, case, the case now goes back to the Office for Foreigners, mm -hmm. which has already in January uh, accepted that the grounds for asylum are fulfilled. Yeah. Now they are granted consent by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, yeah. so they are just now fulfilling all the administrative work yeah. uh, in order to issue the asylum. Uh, in so, so the now next it's days. just a uh, matter of time. It's it's just a matter of time. Yeah. We're just informed by the internal yeah. security <laughs> agency yeah. uh, that they will uh, that they would like to speak to to Celia, to speak to her neighbors probably, yeah. uh, because it is a normal procedure when yeah. granting asylum. Yeah. Uh, but it's just a matter of time. Yeah. So how do you feel about this now? Is this a sort of relief? Because it must have been a stressful time actually. Don't know what's yes, happening. Yes, it's like so. living in a limbo. It's <laughs> it's very stressful. Um, yes, but uh, I don't. I'm not sure if it quite sent in 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 yet because the last two days has been very extremely busy. Yeah. Um, but of course, I am relieved. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> because it's been uh, a very long fight. How, how is uh, your daughter taking this? Does she reflect on this or she just plays? She's like a baby, yes, yeah. no, and uh, <laughs> I'm very glad that she's, she's actually just, you know, she's turning two in, yeah. in January and mm -hmm. she's a very happy living normal life, she's in yeah. Polish nursery and yeah. yeah. She receives in the very best of her, her development. Is yes, yes, she has the best certificates yeah. from the, the specialist, and 
uh, yes. Mm. So. Because it's, you mentioned that this, um, when they come into the hospital, when, when you were in labor actually, yeah. uh, and, and these people from the barn van coming in, with actually far less education than the hospital staff and the doctors, and then look like overriding the whole system. That, that is uh, yes, in fact, not they, a good thing. <laughs> they believe that they can evaluate the situation of the mother better yeah. than the professionals. Than the highly educated yes, you are right. You are right. And what was it also in my case that mm -hmm. it was like some anonymous, uh, you know, Worry. reports yeah. that was sent and, you know, our investigation, you know, um, uh, found out that they sent them to themselves yeah. in order to be able to, to come to the hospital. So it, it was actually the Barnum yes. itself that sent a worry message yes, to, to, to themselves, the, themselves, anonymous, yes, probably, yes, yes. Uh, just to get started. I, I have seen that in yeah. other cases. Because, you know, the other... Um, matters of concern that mm -hmm. were sent um, by the father of my oldest child yeah. through Barnum and they, they have to, you know, dismiss them because officially you cannot, you know, open a case on an un unborn child. No. So then they have to make some new in order to come to the yeah. hospital. So yeah. that was the way they, they so dealt with that. After the, the, the born, born, after you born her, that the new message... No, no, it born. came in only a, a couple of days before uh, the birth oh, of yeah. Ira. Anonymous, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes. Unbelievable. And you know, it, it, you know the, the concern was that I was able to kidnap my own child. And when you, I had this uh, former chief of police look yeah. into this, he, he was like, kidnap your own child from, from who? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to say that uh, the Kingdom of Norway was the last European country to accept <coughs> the Hague Convention of 1996. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's the family convention on the jurisdiction on the, in, in the family cases. Yeah. Uh, that sets the proper jurisdiction in cases like Celia's, mm. saying in Article 5 that if Celia switches her uh, domicile to Poland, mm. she, she moves to Poland, then Barnard Renard has lost its jurisdiction over the family yeah. and only Polish Child Protection Services may follow the family, may, may, may check for the well-being of, yeah. of, of, of the child. Yeah. And in 2016, when the convention was ratified by Norway, on, on the same year the penal code was changed and amended in order to penalize escaping Norway yeah. with a child even before the decision of Barnard Renard was issued, yeah. but after the proceeding was commenced. So it was, of course, uh, in order to violate the, the intent of this international act yeah. to secure the well-being of the family. And then we were, we were afraid mm. that there will be uh, some false documents produced by Barnard mm. Ornament uh, showing yeah. uh, that, in fact, uh, the proceedings were commenced before CV left. Yeah, we knew that there was no proceeding commenced. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we already know about yes. the existence and documents. We informed them just a few days after Celia contacted us yeah. in order to increase. Uh, we informed Barnard Vernon, we informed Bouvdir, we informed the Ministry of Justice. And the embassy. And the embassy yeah. that, he, and that she is living with her child in Poland, that according to Article 5 of the Hague Convention, there is no jurisdiction of the Barnard Vernon and on, of the, the Norwegian system over, over this family. Yeah. And even the they have twice tried to bring the case to the Norwegian court. <laughs> uh, and for the first time, uh, saying that the situation of the family is terrible and they just have to take the child yeah. from the family. Yeah. And then on the day of the hearing, yeah. uh, the employee of the barn that was absent. Yeah, on uh, safari. So <laughs> she was on safari. So, 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 two <laughs> so only like two days before or something like that, they, they withdraw. Yeah. They withdraw the case. Because then it was not so urgent anymore and no. then they, they, you know, filed a new motion yeah. uh, one month later. Yeah. All, the time, all the time with express violation of the Article 5 of the Hague Convention as yeah. they knew that she is living in Poland. Yeah. So everything they could do is to inform the Polish authorities mm. that they have some concerns uh, about the family yeah. and they ask to check the situation of the family. Yeah. Have uh, have the um, have the Norwegian barn owner sent some 
message to the Polish? Yes, probably Polish. a lot. <laughs> and the oh, police and yes, yes. We know the uh, nodes in the Schengen system yeah. Yeah. Uh, that they are missing. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, we inform them that they live in Warsaw. And that is also a, a huge violation by the Norwegian police because as an adult person yeah. uh, without any criminal history yeah. and without any ongoing proceedings I, to I can travel yeah. wherever I go yeah. and there has been no uh, care over uh, taking over care of yeah. Ira in my case no. but still they but they also refuse to, to you know uh, give us the legal grounds for why they yes. put this information so we're still waiting yeah. Yeah. So the police, uh, the police in Poland was asked by the counterparts in Norway uh, to check for the situation of the missing family. Okay. Uh, and they contacted me as they knew the address of, yeah. of my office. And we met them, we informed them on the situation, we presented them with the documents, uh, with the medical files of the child. Uh, so the Polish authorities were, were assured that everything is okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, but in fact, uh, it all started up with this claim of the Norwegian authorities that the CD is missing. And they, won't, they were very eager to, you know, have my address and they have been yeah. ever since, you yeah. know, to, for <laughs> unknown re reasons. So the situation was... was, was it's, it is the same attitude, you see, the, the ownership. They are missing yeah. from them. Yes, yes. But they have nothing in it. Because it, it has nothing to do with the best interest no. of the child. No, no because... Uh, <laughs> Like Jesse said, they can just, you know, ask the police authorities to, yeah. to check. But, you know, it, it is also expressed very clearly in, in the motion that was yeah. filed that, yeah. you know, we, regardless that Ira is in Poland, we yeah. see her as a Norwegian. We, they, they were claiming like ownership yeah. through these motions that saying yeah. we don't care about our convention. She, according to us, she Nor they own her. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think they got it all wrong up there in the mountains. <laughs> you know, and when I met uh, one of the employees of the Norwegian Embassy yeah. uh, of Warsaw, it was during a meeting in OSC in Warsaw. Yeah. Uh, and afterwards, when we tried to, to ask the embassy yeah. for some statement on the situation, for contact even, yeah. uh, to be able to speak on the situation, all the time they refused. Yeah. Uh, they, all the time they referred us to the authorities in Oslo. Yeah. Uh, and we never received any reply from the authorities in Oslo. Yeah. Uh, so the situation was very strange. In, in, yeah. On one hand, the authorities, Norwegian authorities, are very much interested in the situation, trying to uh, overcome the international regulations in order yeah. to reach their citizens yeah. in Poland against the guarantees yeah. of the Hague Convention. Yeah. And on the other hand, when she asked them what's happening, through her representative, legal representative, yeah. they, they were silent. Yeah. They didn't answer at all. No. It's a sort of arrogance. It's, they don't care. It's but my they, way of the high I even asked the previous Ombudsman for Children in yeah. Oslo when I was there a year ago for a meeting in order to speak about, to talk about the situation. Yeah. Uh, and she just refused. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it is unbelievable in Poland. I mean, when you ask the Ombudsman for Children uh, to meet uh, and, and to talk about some very important and, and, and well-known situation. Yeah. Uh, maybe not he himself, but one of his representatives will find time, will find time uh, to, to, to meet the attorney yeah. and to speak on the case. Not, not in the case of the Norwegian authorities. It, it looked like they, when they are running their own agenda, they are pushing hard, coming in full force. But the moment somebody come back to them and ask, where are the proof? What's going on? It's they are like a wall of it's a si wall. Si silence. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I, I met a uh, minister of foreign affairs of Norway during yeah. a conference a year ago, and I asked her on the case. Yeah. I explicitly say that I'm, I'm legal legal representative of city government. Yeah. She knew what was happening and yeah. what's the case about, and I asked her, is it possible to speak with you or one of your uh, officials, representatives yeah. on the case, she just escaped. Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah. it was an open conference where they invited to a public debate. Yeah. And because of yes, she asked, they closed down the, this fruitful discussion <laughs> debate. And so it was like very embarrassing because um, 
also present. Um, there were like representative from Polish media, so yeah. they they witnessed all this yeah. because they were looking forward to you know record a debate, maybe to get some words by the Norwegian Minister of Foreign Affairs. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I was warned that it might turn this this way by Arthur Kubik, yeah. uh, chief of the Solidarity yeah. Norge, yeah. Labour Union. Uh, who, who who brought me to the conference yeah. and told me yeah, try to ask the question, but in fact you know it's Norwegian authorities no. they, they would probably just escape the situation. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it was like that. It, it show actually what's going on because if they were so sure about something was wrong with you yeah. and the baby, just come with the documentation. But when you start ask for the. Co- the and it's also very wrong because all the time in such uh, cases they use this like emergency paragraph yeah. Yeah. where they are not they don't need to justify it. yeah. just it's like mm-hmm. uh, you know emergency you know situation where we where the life of the child is in in danger yes, yeah. yes. and even in this uh, 412 section of the of the Barnabas attack, yeah. uh, they use this emergency way of taking the child of the, fa- of the family against the Polish families yeah. only because they are Polish and yeah. it is in the grounds yes, because they, <laughs> they are Polish. So there is danger that they will escape Norway to their home travel country. To, to Poland. <laughs> yes. So this is emergency situation. <laughs> yeah, uh, only because of the nationality. Yeah. Uh, that, that is actually racism. Yes. That's actually, yes, they, they are biased Just against that, uh, uh, foreigners. And, and we will present all of that yeah. in, the, in the report. In the report uh, yeah. And, you know, this attitude was actually, you mm. know, I mean, reason to why I have such a huge support here yeah. in Poland, because I really have amongst, you know, Polish people, because yeah. they were furious when they, they see Ira uh, yeah. with me in this yeah. smiling, happy child. Yeah. Why should this child be life be in danger here in Poland yeah. just because it is in the Polish Republic and yeah. not in the Kingdom of Norway. Yeah. And this is something very interesting as the political scene in Poland that it is very much uh, polarized now yeah. uh, between the liberals and conservatives and all of them supported Syria. Yeah. <laughs> uh, over all the polarized situation, yeah. all the media, the liberal media, uh, tabloids yeah. and uh, and newspapers, weekly magazines, yeah. uh, politicians uh, from the conservative and from the liberal side, 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 yeah. side of the parliament, yeah. all they supported yeah. CDS case. Yeah. Uh, so it is something that just united uh, Polish people mm. uh, in trying to, to, to protect this family. Because when I was in, in parliament, when I had this yeah. public hearing there, yeah. I was able even to, to bring politicians together that yes. normally does not speak to each other. <laughs> and this, because I invited them, they yeah. sat, sit around the same table yeah. listening to this you know, situation. They, they oh, could, I could unite on this case. Yeah. And, and, for, uh, and for someone who knows the situation in Poland yeah. and, uh, and, the, and the political fight going on, yeah. it is something out of order. Yeah. Uh, they, they just speak on one case and agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on that, and it is in the field of human rights, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very, very, very important. Very important. Okay, so now, now we heard uh, Udo Julius and your involvement. We heard uh, Silvia Garbo. Uh, where, what is, what are we waiting for now for the final solution? Most of the proceedings has already uh, are taken place. Or, or already yeah. finished. Has mm-hmm. taken place. Uh, we are waiting now for the final decision of the Office for Foreigners yeah. uh, that, that has so. to formally finish the proceeding yeah. by issuing the asylum yeah. uh, decision and, and then see is protected in Poland and for the, uh, <laughs> with, with, with this permanent status of, of asylum yeah. she will be protected for as long as it is needed for her, mm-hmm. uh, for her basic rights and the basic rights of Ida. And it will be, you know, an historical event because it will be the first time since the, the World War II that a yeah. citizen of the Norwegian Kingdom have to, you know, seek, uh, you protection know, protection from, from another the sovereign <laughs> state in, in Europe. Maybe so it's a link really, here. It is Last time it was during World War II. The Nazis controlled Norway. That's why Norwegian needed protection outside Norway. Uh, and now, 
somebody again, Celia, is needed protection from the Norwegian government. There is a history here. <laughs> I hope that we will contribute somehow to a change. Yeah, yeah, because it is, you know, if you analyze it, it is, it is a really serious issue and it yeah. should, you know, draw attention yeah. from the authorities in Oslo because it, you know, Theoretically, it also opens up for other people to to do the same. Yeah. Um, it's not impossible anymore to no. get protection outside Norway. Yes. Your case has shown that this. Of is course, it is nothing that I would or could recommend anybody to do because, yeah. you know, as we have told you, I was forced to do so because yeah. even when I was on Polish ground, yeah. uh, even if I came here. You know, without any, you know, verdicts or yeah. or so, they they continue to you know harass me. Yeah. So it, it was the only you know option for me to yeah. protect Ira and to yeah. keep her safe yeah. physically, yeah. Uh, because you know, as long as the proceedings of asylum is ongoing, you have a, a temporary protection. So then, the, the Norwegian authorities would have to back off. But you know, it is not like a walk in the park. It is really hard, and you know, Polish authorities, um, uh, they they you know demand proof as well, yeah. and not like the Barnevern. They yeah. you have to have you know back up every every claim that you you know present. Yeah. It is not like you can just say oh Barnevern and then it will be a, a free ride because yeah. yes. So, so you could actually have had a normal life in Norway without yeah. all this hardship for you yeah. and Aira and your whole family yes. uh, if the Norwegian government actually just followed the law, the yes. international law they are um, obligated to follow. And what exactly. makes me yeah. most angry about this is, is that they justify everything with the best interest of the child. Yeah. And now I have one daughter here and another daughter in Oslo yeah. and even if international conventions yeah. say that they should be brought up together yeah. they have to live separately yeah. and uh, my 13 year old daughter mm. who is you know understanding the most of this yeah. has to go abroad to, to visit her sister yeah. and you, yeah. you could imagine what that you know what kind of thoughts yeah. she is you know bringing yeah. it's not a walk in the park to get in your situation, it's a, it's a violation of every right you have, actually. Yeah. Okay, that should sum it up. Then we uh, will thank you for listening to us. You have heard uh, the president of uh, Odo Julius. Um, thank you very much. And Silvia, uh, I hope you all uh, take this into consideration and, and let everybody know what is actually going on in Norway uh, regarding the Norwegian child care system, Barnevern. And let's hope that your case can be a breaker for that this system is changed. That's probably the most important if it can change to normal. At least follow the law. At least. Yeah. It must be. It must be a start somewhere. So I think. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. then we we'll say thank you for yeah. us here in Warsaw, Poland, and uh, we probably won't, uh, we probably will hear more about this case later. But uh, for now, we say goodbye from. Goodbye.